Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Hey there, guitar lovers! Have you ever thought about the little things that make the magic happen when you strum your guitar? That's right, I'm talking about the strings. They're a small but crucial part of creating that sound we all love, yet most of us don't really know how they're made or how they produce sound. Today, we're going to dive deep into the fascinating world of guitar strings, how they're crafted, the materials involved, and most importantly, how they turn your playing into music. Let's start with the basics. What are guitar strings made from? It depends on the type of guitar, whether it's acoustic, electric, or classical. But in general, there are two main types of strings, those made from metal and those made from nylon. Nylon strings are typically used for classical guitars and have a warm, mellow sound. Nylon itself isn't a natural material, but it's pretty durable and flexible, which is why it's perfect for classical guitars. The process to create nylon strings starts by melting and extruding nylon into thin threads. These threads are then twisted and wound into the string you see on the guitar. The three thickest strings are usually wrapped with another material, like silver-plated copper, to give them more density and better tone. Steel strings are a whole different ballgame. They're what you'll find on both acoustic and electric guitars. These strings start with a steel core, which can either be round or hexagonal in shape. Why does that matter? The shape of the core affects the string's flexibility and tone. Hex cores are more rigid and provide a brighter sound, while round cores are more flexible, giving a warmer tone. The core is then wound with another metal, typically nickel, phosphor bronze, or stainless steel. For acoustic guitars, phosphor bronze is popular for its bright yet rich sound. On electric guitars, nickel-plated steel is a common choice because it provides a balanced tone that works well with pickups. Now let's talk about how these materials turn into actual strings. First, the core wire is created. This involves drawing steel or nylon into thin, uniform wires. For steel strings, the wire is usually coated to prevent rust. Next, the winding process begins. This is where the core is wrapped with additional wire giving the string its final diameter and weight. The way the string is wound also matters. You'll hear terms like round, flat, or half-wound. This refers to the shape of the wire that's wound around the core. Round wand. The wire is round, which gives the string a textured feel and bright sound. Flat wand. The wire is flat, creating a smooth surface that produces a darker, mellower tone. Half wand somewhere in between, offering a balanced sound and feel. Each type of winding affects the tone, playability, and even the feel of the strings under your fingers. That's why you might prefer one over another depending on your playing style. After the winding, the strings are polished to remove any rough edges. Then they're tested for consistency, ensuring they vibrate correctly and produce a stable tone. The string is then packaged and ready to be slapped onto your guitar. All right, we've covered how they're made, but what about the sound? How do these strings actually produce those beautiful notes? Well, it all starts with something we've probably all heard of, vibration. When you pluck or strum a guitar string, you're causing it to vibrate. These vibrations travel through the air and that's what we hear as sound. But there's a bit more to it than that. The pitch of the sound depends on a few factors, one of which is the tension of the string. A tighter string vibrates faster, producing a higher pitch. That's why when you tighten a string while tuning your guitar, the pitch goes up. Conversely, loosening the string lowers the pitch. The thickness or gauge of the string also plays a role. Thicker strings are heavier and don't vibrate as fast as thinner ones, so they produce a lower pitch. That's why bass strings are thicker than treble strings. 
The length of the string that's allowed to vibrate also affects the pitch. On a guitar, the vibrating length of the string is determined by the distance between the nut and the bridge. When you press down on the fretboard, you're shortening the vibrating length, which raises the pitch. Now, strings alone don't make a whole lot of sound. What you're hearing isn't just the string vibrating, it's the whole guitar resonating. In an acoustic guitar, the hollow body amplifies the sound. When the strings vibrate, they make the soundboard vibrate as well. The soundboard, in turn, moves the air inside the guitar body, creating a much louder sound than the strings alone would make. In an electric guitar, it's a bit different. The strings still vibrate, but instead of relying on the guitar's body to amplify the sound, the pickups do the heavy lifting. These pickups are magnets wrapped in coils of wire. When the steel strings vibrate, they disrupt the magnetic field, generating a small electrical current. This signal is then sent to an amplifier, which boosts the sound and allows for all kinds of effects and distortions. Now that we know how strings make sound, it's important to point out that the material of the string and its construction hugely influence the sound as well. Nylon strings give a soft, warm sound, perfect for classical and flamenco music. Steel strings produce a brighter, louder tone, ideal for folk, country, and rock. The winding material, whether it's nickel, phosphor bronze, or stainless steel, also plays a part. For example, nickel-plated steel strings on an electric guitar tend to have a well-rounded tone, while pure stainless steel gives a sharper, more cutting sound. And there you have it. Guitar strings may seem simple, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes, from the materials used to the way they're made, and how they vibrate to create the sound we love. Whether you're playing a classical, acoustic, or electric guitar, those strings are the heart of your instrument, translating your technique and emotion into music. Next time you're restringing your guitar or plucking a tune, take a moment to appreciate the incredible process behind those tiny wires. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.